Thank you, Heather. Good morning. I'd like to update you on the progress we're making to advance the President's Iran policy. It is about changing the behavior of the leadership in Iran to comport with what the Iranian people really want them to do. A key part of our strategy is a campaign of maximum economic and diplomatic pressure. The first part of our sanctions will snap back on August 4th. These sanctions will include targeting Iran's automotive sector, trade in gold, and other key metals. Our remaining sanctions will snap back on November 6. These sanctions will include targeting Iran's energy sector and petroleum-related transactions and transactions with the Central Bank of Iran. Sanctions are set to be reimposed on November 4th. Our focus is on getting as many countries importing Iranian crude down to zero as soon as possible. We are also working with oil market participants, including producers and consumers, to ensure market stability. Banking, san banking sanctions will also snap back on November 4th, and we will be aggressively enforcing these provisions to lock up Iran's assets overseas and deny the Iranian regime access to its hard currency. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Uh, India and uh, I believe Turkey have explicitly said that they will continue to import Iranian oil. Could you be precise about the kind of consequences they will face or that corporations and banks will face if they do this? We are not looking to grant licenses or waivers. Um, because doing so would substantially reduce pressure uh, on Iran. And this is a campaign of imposing pressure. And so we are not looking uh, to grant um, licenses or waivers broadly on the reimposition of sanctions, because we believe pressure is critical to, a to achieve our national security objectives. Uh, we are prepared to work with countries that are reducing their imports on a case-by-case -case basis. But as with our other sanctions, we are not looking to grant waivers or licenses.